So after Drost went, I, for a while I just did generated stuff for ESLs, like people, that was a, that was a guy that I worked for that was like, he would hire me to come and direct something, either audio or actual like dramatic type stuff. Um, but it wasn't until like 2000, around there I was like starting to get paid to write scripts. And then uh, uh, this company here, a local company here called Aerostorm came and their whole thing is they make these kind of low budget fantasy films and then sell them, then they can make their money back in foreign sales and stuff like that. So they came and they said, hey, we have this idea for a movie, um, you know, would you be interested in directing it? And uh, to be honest, I was kind of like, at that time I was kind of freaking out about whether or not I would ever make a feature. So that was like a huge like, of course I'll make your feature. Because I just need to, I just need to cross that threshold, you know. So it wasn't a genre that I was really excited about, you know. It was about, it was kind of fantasy and, and like, I wanted to do things like Drost Wind, you know, where I just felt like it was like, kind of an anti-war movie that, you know, like had cool visuals and it was VFX, but it like was actually about something very profound and deep to me. And, you know, my first feature was a very fun, you know, shoot 'em up with a guy with fighting orcs with a machine gun. Like, it was kind of like not what I would have chosen. Uh, and I debated for a long time about whether I should just take the job or, you know, and I had a friend who was like, you know, your first feature is your first feature for the rest of your life. Like, you gotta be careful. And uh, ultimately, I just decided that I needed you know, I needed the work, I needed the money, but I also just needed the opportunity, and if I could just do my best, then it'll be good. And, you know, we made it, and it's a fun movie, you know, it's ridiculous. It's, it's uh, you know, I wrote it and I directed it, and it's, it was, you know, it's not uh, my proudest work, but, um, you know, I, there's something I like about it. Like, I've, I definitely got in and found the thing I liked. It was very exploitative, just kind of like, guns and orcs, you know, but um, but that actually, like everything, you know, like I, I try really hard to make sure that everything I do is a step forward, and so the next step is easy to take. That was kind of, that was kind of my first feature, and it was like, you know, we shot, it was a, it was a fantasy epic that we shot in 15 days, it was just like a crucible, it was really, really hard, and, and you know, it had a lot of VFX, and it had a lot of, you know, practical effects. It taught me a lot, it opened my eyes, um, kind of from this whole student film thing where I could be very, very particular and, you know, like, who cares if I, you know, don't get the film finished for another year and then suddenly being hired and, like, being, you know, under deadlines that were being put out, you know, like, pre they had pre-sold the film, so we had to finish it, you know, by a certain time, which, like, affected the quality of everything. and. It was like a really good learning experience and I mean I'm, I'm very grateful that I had that opportunity to make it but I kind of had to learn it was a big that was like my big transition from like working as a student filmmaker to like being a professional where I can be hired and you know and that's not to say that I wasn't like you know like I will fight tooth and nail to make the film as, as good as I can and if the producers are not aren't on board with that then there can be problems but I feel like that should be every director. Like, no director should be like, all right, you know. And I actually learned that. Like, there was a couple of times when, when the producers would come in and say, like, we've decided this. And I'm like, all right, you know, this is, you know, you make your bed, you sleep in it. But then I learned that, like, as a director, no matter what happens, I'm always sleeping in that bed. You know, like, my name is the biggest name on that project as, you know, from behind the camera scene, you know. And I just realized that, like, I, I felt like I, I might have made some concessions a little too easily um, that affected the quality of the work. So, but, it, you know, it really kind of like, I got that done, it kind of like moved me to the, the next thing. The next thing I made the next the following year was a TV pilot that um, uh, was locally produced. It was kind of a spec pilot and this, this, um, this guy financed it and uh, it was, his passion project and so I was very very much like 
Um, I was very much a hired gun to make that. Um, but, you know, again, fought tooth and nail to make it as good as I could because that's, like I said, like even, even if it's somebody else's passion project, it's my life that I'm putting into it. And so I needed to like have it actually count for something. I can't, I don't have the luxury of making a project that just disappears off the face of the earth and nobody sees it, you know, like I need it to, like I need to at least use it for my reel or something like that. Um, and so that was made and uh, it was, it just played uh, late last year, it played at the International Television Festival in Vermont. I'm pretty sure it's in Vermont. I think it is. It is back east. It was very beautiful. Um, and we all went out to that. But uh, I, like again, I didn't, unlike with Wind and the Promethean, which I was like submitting and promoting and all this stuff, I was kind of like, you know, the hired gun. And it's like, hey, do you want to come to this festival and help us? And I'm like, yeah, that would be great. So, you know, I went out there for that. But, um, and then, uh, and then just recently I got hired this last year through the Utah Film Commission, I got hired to do a, a feature, direct a feature that um, a company called Mar Vista uh, made. They're out in LA and they do their whole thing. They do like 30 of these type movies every year. And um, they hired a producer who was from here and she wanted to come back out here and shoot. So she came out and they contacted the Utah Film Commission. And they're like, you know, we need a director from Utah. And I was on the short list and ended up getting that job and we made it and it just got sold to Lifetime. It's airing June 4th, I think. But yeah, again, it, it wasn't, again, like like Work Wars, it wasn't it wasn't something I would like go out of my way to seek out, but it was a lot of fun. I, I liked it a little bit better because I'm a big Hitchcock fan and it was cool to be able to like do a thriller and like try to figure out like how to build suspense and all that stuff, but like I said, everything just has like, you know, it's like, I'm gonna do my best here because I need it to help me get closer to where I'm trying to go, so. What I'm working on now is, um, I've written a screen, I've written a couple screenplays uh, that I've sold, um, that we're trying to find money for. And so, um, one of them's a, it's like a really kind of contained, psychological thriller kind of like in the vein of open water where like people just get stuck and they're trying to deal in survival situations those kind of films you can make cheaper so we're trying to like that's what I'm really trying to focus on is getting that one made because we don't need a huge budget to do it um, but then I have another project that's actually a bigger budget but um, that's the one we're just I've I've kind of taken a step back and um, you know, people haven't come and offered me a job. If they offered me a job, I'd like, hey, we want you to direct this feature. I'd be like, okay, let's do it. But um, I'm finding that, like, when I have these windows where I don't have something I'm doing, like, they're really stressful financially, but I actually love them because I can work on my films. I can work on my projects and get things much further along, which I feel like in the long run, Will be more beneficial to me and my family than you know making orc wars or stepsister and both those by the way both those titles have been changed like when orc wars was released in the u.s it was um it's titled dragon fire now with a y it's on netflix and hulu and then stepsister when it got sold to lifetime they changed it to you may now kill the bride which i think is probably maybe a better spec title I don't know but um but yeah so I'm, I'm trying like right now I'm trying my hardest to like kind of move out from being somebody that people hire to somebody that I can like generate my own content but um I also really love I don't know there's 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 a, a niceness to having somebody hire you and they say here's the script and you say I can interpret this however I want Whereas if you write something and it's your own and it's your baby, then there's only one way that you can see it. And, you know, like there's there's a coolness to being a hired gun, a creative freedom that you don't always get when you're doing your own thing. And it's, it's weird, but 
obviously I prefer to be, you know, coming up with my own projects and writing them and directing them and stuff like that, but 